watching on my phone on YouTube and it didn't seem to be playing. No. It worked perfectly earlier. Well, it would do, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Now we've got train sim open. Yep. I, it's almost like it's replaying things hey. from earlier. <sighs> It's just train sim, isn't it? Ah. Right, supposedly I've got some form of uh, live stream. Well, I'm looking at it on my phone and it seems to be there, so we've got voices and we've got visuals. I have um, no idea what happened with the, um, the intro scenes. Alright, uh, before we get started, let's just check everybody can hear. Yeah, there's people talking in the chat, so that'll do. Right, so, um, yeah. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Angry Welshman Productions. I am the Angry Welshman. I'm joined tonight by Sam. Hello. Of Blast Pipe Productions, and tonight we are basically, well, we were supposed to be doing a rerun of last week's live stream because of all the technical issues that we had. Um... <clears throat> But it seems that uh, Streamlabs doesn't want to behave again, even though I tested it earlier and it worked perfectly fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to do even more testing and find out what on earth's going on. So, what are we doing tonight, Sam? Um, What are we doing tonight? It's a good question. We are um, taking this thing on a very difficult journey. Yeah, basically. basically, what we're doing is we're taking the most difficult loco to drive in train sim. And we're taking it up the steepest continuous hill we could find. Pretty much. 12 um, miles of uh, one, in, 1 in 40. Yeah, and I'm going to say as well, I don't know when you last drove this thing, but I haven't actually driven this thing in quite a while. We should have got the, uh, the manual out. Nah, it'll be right. We'll work it out. We'll work it out when the firebox caves in <laughs> and the boiler mm. explodes. Yeah, that'll be it, won't it? Right, so uh, what else have we got on Abergavenny? This is Abergavenny Brecken Road Shed, by the way. Uh, so we've got a Super D and we've got a coal tank. Yeah, Sam, this is one for you. Yep. There we go. Um, we've actually got a few coal tanks placed around the route, so, uh, you know, just in case we do need an emergency coal tank halfway through the journey. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention just before we get started is, uh, the 2800 has been released from Steam Sound Supreme. Uh, I've got an emergency 2800 sat here just in case we need it. Um, because, Not like you know, we're expecting to fuck up or anything, but... <laughs> Great Western supremacy and all that. And also, from Caledonia Works, the LSWRT9 has been released um, so here's one on shed it's done a rail tour and it's now waiting to go back on the return leg um, it's brought all the real enthusiasts from the southwest of England to come and watch me and Sam screw up as we go up the incline <laughs> and then they'll be taking the real enthusiasts back to the southwest to go and drink their tea and eat their crumpets so without further ado let's uh, shunt back onto our train shall we Stick that on so I can see what we're doing. Are you pressing buttons? No. Okay, I have got no control. Yes, I do, apparently. <laughs> right, hang on then. Now I have control. No! Oh, God. <laughs> and the first thing you do is go the wrong way. Right, so the reverse, right. i got to remember that the reverser needs to be backwards. And the... Oh, see, I did it again. The reg needs to be backwards, <laughs> so we need to release the brakes. Are you driving or am I driving? Um, up to you. Tell you what, just give us a sec to switch the audio around as well. I may need to hop off and hop on again. Okay. Um, it's coming out on <coughs> the TV at the moment, and it'll pick it up on mic. I'm just gonna put the. Oh, you yeah. messing around? You messing around with them? Are you? Okay. Um, a bit of a doop. So, for anyone who has driven the um, 
the Super D recently, if you could give us some hints. I look, it looks like uh, Matthew Palmer has done some recommendations. 550 fire mass as a maximum, because I guess you just smother the fire other than that. Uh, keep an eye on the boiler water level and the brake gauge in the reverse setting, and if the water is being caught when going into the boiler. I have no idea what that means. Um, I do. Um, yeah, I'm waiting to connect again, Reese. Oh, you need to connect. Okay. Hang on then. Parsec. <laughs> you in? Yep, that's better. I can hear it in my ear now. Great to hear. I just need to put the lamps on. What lamps do we need for um, mineral train? I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, it tells you. Uh, well, we're definitely not going to be an express freight. <laughs> well, it's not an express freight. Let's try parcels or perishables. No. Is it top lamp and one over one of the buffers, or is that an express? Light engines. I don't know express freight. Let's try number three. Oh, it doesn't tell you anymore. Uh, Michael Thames just donated two pounds saying I won't be able to handle the D. Well. Well then. That's an interesting comment. Sam has just taken all the lamps off. I better just set the signals for going back onto the main line. So we're on the shed. Well, hey, notification time. I thought like we were in game for a second then, and we're quite confused. Oh right, we gotta figure out how to get onto the onto that. See, you can't switch over there. <laughs> right, so we're gonna have to do a bit of messing around here. Excellent. So we're gonna have to go all the way back to the head shunt, and then forward, and then back onto our train. Yep. Okay, excellent. Did we figure out what lamps we're using yet, or no? Um. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> right then, let's get going. It's uh, it's special royal core we're taking. Oh Christ! I just remembered when we were manoeuvring the Super D last time. Do you remember how what the tender did last time? Yes, I do. I, I can't bear to watch. <laughs> I can't. Every now and then I just can't control the reg. Oh, because it's the yep. wrong way, that's why. <laughs> I can... Uh, I can never well, remember. Door opens. Reese Jones says it's bottom right yep. for the lamp. But I'm like, what did I stick on? I think you did bottom right, didn't you? I hope I did. I might have done bottom left, though. Oh, you did bottom left. It's all right. Well, yeah, Just change the, the change the lamps as we're going. Totally realistic operations. <laughs> now, do we want bottom right looking at it or bottom right? Okay, we're priming. From the worker. Only just had a minor shit yourself moment there. I don't know yep. what happened. I think the reg is stuck open. Yes, it is. Nicely done. <laughs> I guess we were priming. It's my guess. Um, my guess is you opened the reg too much. Let's try again. Gently does it. Oh, now apparently the A key opens the reg and the D key shuts it. So whatever buttons we've pressed, we've swapped the controls around. Huh. See, now that's weird. I knew you could swap them in game, but I didn't know how to do it. So for some reason, that's why we started doing it, because I was trying to shut the reg, and I was and actually just opening it. Well, right. if in doubt, press all the buttons until it does what you want. 
Now, do I need to press R or do I need to hold it down? You need to hold it down because it only shovels while you're holding it down. Oh, uh, what a pain. A literal pain in the finger. Now, I'm going to say pretty much as soon as we're on the train, you're just going to have to shovel like hell. I'm just not going to take my finger off the R key. <laughs> I did try doing this run earlier. And yeah. Actually, it was a few days ago. It was set in the autumn time, so the weather conditions might not have helped. But we did. I did just end up wheel slipping. Excellent. So. Yeah, I have noticed you've made it easier. I was expecting a horrifically undrivable challenge. I'm a little disappointed, Reese. To be well, honest, this is. I, mean... I haven't taken anything off. That's it. I so it's wheel, still a full length train. I wheel slip like hell on this. <laughs> so, and I think it's 25. I want to say 25 anyway. Right, well, I'll just sit on the front buffer beam and drop a load of sand buckets yeah. onto the rails then. We're going to have to go full Himalayan Darjeeling with two guys standing on the front with buckets of sand. Ready? Eh, eh, why not? Let's do this. Whistle stuck open. <laughs> Just oh gave God. it a whack with a hammer. Yeah. We are killing train sim with Parsec tonight. Well, it is fun. Oh, I'm actually getting some reasonable steep speed control at last. Are you now? I got the regs. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Sam did that, by the way. I, I did no such thing. I don't know what you ran about. Lies. Great Western propaganda. Great Western lies. <laughs> <coughs> so, as we mentioned last week, in front of us is the mighty Blorange. And we are heading to Bryn Mawr on the Heads of the Valley route up the Clidic Gorge and basically it's gonna suck yeah that's, that's about a good summary dump the brakes wind her back so we're gently taking it away at full reg yeah yeah of course What's the handbrake? I don't know, but you better hope that is the handbrake and not the water scoop. I don't think this has a water scoop. Oh, crap! Crap, crap, crap. What? I, oh, Sam, you're going to kick me. What? we got to go back to the shed. Because we only have 600 gallons. Yeah, I completely forgot. I set the scenario so we had to take on water before we leave. Well, bugger. <laughs> Reese, will we ever have a stream where we actually do something competent? No. It's if not... I actually, do you know what? We might next week or the week after. I think you're planning on the T9 next time? Yeah, next week we'll be doing the T9. Right, week after then. Um, because my exciting parcel, which is currently in the Netherlands of all places, uh, should be arriving on Monday. Well, hey. So I should be well and set up within two weeks. Excellent. I like how Hectic has just noticed there's only 600 gallons in the water, in the ta tender tank. <laughs> yeah. It was to try and add a bit more immersion to the scenario so we're not just driving on a route, like we actually got to do something. Right. Well, that went well. But that, of course, then I forgot. That's taught us to try and do something. I know, right? <laughs> All the way forward. Sorry, Sam. I know you were building a really nice fire then. Yep. Handbrakes. I'd, I've got it just about right. right let's let's just run forward. Because I'm pretty sure if we... If we go forwards, we should be able to just run onto the shed and get water. Yes. If you look at well, it... That's up, sir. 
I'm pretty sure if we just go there, like that, we should just get water there. Let's do this! And away we go. I remember I tried driving this engine once before on the Pennoy Valley Railway and I really struggled just to get any control for a while and, yep. then, and then it became really enjoyable and then I then I blew up the boiler. <laughs> you blow up the boiler? Never. Never before, right? Ooh, let's watch the Super D tip over on these beautiful turns. Y yep, that sounds about right. Um, by the way, Reese, you are going to have to keep an eye on the water for me. Um, the fire I can kind of wing a bit, but the water I can't really tell too well. Yeah. Um, I'll try work the injectors when it needs it, but I'll need you just to verify that they are actually working. Yeah, they'll probably end up... I, I'm pretty sure this thing has got trimmers that you yeah. have to mess around with. We'll, when we get to the water tower now, we'll have a look. We'll just do a quick test. To be honest, I think the trimmers will be fine as long as we maintain boiler pressure. I love this machine, but it's just so difficult to drive. This is like the first time I've properly driven it since the first live stream I did a few years ago. It's literally the first time I've looked at it since then. It's been a while. Crash into the core tank. No, we're not going to crash into the core tank. I better wind my neck in. I don't want to hit the uh, water tower. I don't know. You might after we've finished driving this thing. <laughs> I know, right? Line her up. Um, You've overshot it. Have I? I reckon. How do you reckon that? You damn it, you were right. <laughs> How? What? <laughs> I genuinely have no idea how you you guessed that. Because I've developed an eye for it. Let's see if I could just roll back <laughs> on the brake. Come on. We only got to go a few inches. Feet. Well, it's inches now. It was feet before. <laughs> Come on. As long as we don't explode the cylinders now. Lee, lee, lee. Come on. There we go, that'll do. Yep, let's just give the coal a wash. We'll just wash all the coal down. Not entirely unrealistic, though, to be honest. No, especially if it's a nice day. Hey, look, there's water in the tender. Yeah, it's not fun going in those spaces, you know. Particularly the LNWR. I've been in the co tanks water tank before to clean out the injector cones and uh, the injector the water filters rather. Um and that was Beautiful. fun. Right, let's see what these injectors do. I just winded on the handbrake. Still winding. Still winding. There we go. I can just right. take the brakes off as well so we can sit on the handbrake. Right, go on then. Have a play with your injectors. So, that water level should be going down now. Actually, it won't because we're still taking on water, aren't we? Oh, yeah, we're, we're watering up the tender, so... We should be developing a puddle somewhere. Yeah, we're just flooding the Abergavenny engine, engine shed, do not we? Now is it a toggle or an open and close? <clears throat> That's a good question. That's let's, a toggle. Let's go have a quick look. So there's the water a toggle as well. The water is a toggle as well. Oh lovely, we've got easy controls. So that's your one side. Do you have injectors on this side as well? Yeah. Yes, we do. 
So you know how to operate your injectors? Yep, it's just a tap. Okay, well that's good because quite often when I'm driving advanced locos, I really, you know, the game simulation, something goes wrong and it don't work, the, the injectors just don't work properly. So it's, yeah. good, it's good to figure it's, them out before we get going. It's helpful to know as well because on some locos you have to um, like press shift on the button to close it once you've opened it. Yeah. Whereas on others you just, you know, tap it and it'll open and shut. Have you got the blower on by any chance? Um, no. It's not supposed to be on anyway. Unless oh. that's a toggle too, but... No, it's not. Have a look round a bit. I'll see if you can actually find okay. the blower. There we are. I think it might have just been an error or something, because the, the blower's off now. And then right. Now, now it's on and the smoke is really bellowing out of the chimney, and then I shut it off. And it's fine again. I think it might have just... There was a little error, you know, with the whistle earlier. Yeah. Right, let's get this show on the road. Handbrake off. <laughs> Handbrake off. La 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 la. There we go. Handbrake's off. That poor man is getting dripped on. He's just having a wash. It's like that um, challenge, you know, from the summer where all the firemen were getting watered on <laughs> by the water towers. Ice bucket challenge, yeah. but railway edition. The water tower challenge. Joe Light Railway is asking, can we do a live stream of the Kent and East Sussex Railway soon? I don't think it's even in train sim, is it? Um, not that I know of, but... Right, we're backing out of the shed at last. Again. For the second time. And while we're here, let's do some product placement. Buy the, Ch the Caledonia Works T9 and the Steam Sound Supreme 2800. Yours for only however much it costs on their website. Buy the T9, pay for Chris's medical bills because he lives in America and yeah. doesn't have NHS. Burp. Incidentally, I, we completely forgot the last live stream that we did to wish Chris uh, all the best, actually, because he has suffered with COVID-19. Unfortunately, he's become one of the lucky ones to go and get himself COVID-19. So, uh, you know, he's he's looks like he's on the mend. He's had a real rough couple of weeks, especially trying to get the T9 done. So I think everybody can join in saying we wish you all the best, Chris. And I'm sorry I forgot to do this last week. Yep, he's um, he had a doctor's check and he's now clear of COVID, but he's now got um, quite a lengthy recovery period from it. Um, so yeah, he's not in the best of shape at the moment, so he's going to be taking it easy. But I think that's well deserved. So he's only going to work nine till six rather than <laughs> what he normally does. Yep, like he's like he said earlier, it's like. Oh, so recovering from COVID-19, buy the new <laughs> Caledonia Works yep. product. Literally, oh yeah, doctors Doctors told me I've got to take it easy and do minimal work, so I'm only going to turn out one or two products a month instead of three or four. He basically said he's going to work a 40 hour week, didn't he? And that's taking it easy. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's an absolute madman. He's an animal. Right, Sam, we'll be able to put your lovely fire to good use soon. Oh, good. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying driving the Super D right now. I think it's one of those locos where it's alright when you get used to it. And to be honest, I think doing this multiplayer thing is actually a lot better for advanced locos. Well, so far, I haven't really looked at the water level because I'm leaving that to you. Although I, yeah, I will have to check the gauge glasses. I'm pretty sure you can turn them. Ah, there we are, look. Yep. So 
Every now and then, just give me a shout if you want to check the gauge glasses. Yeah. Because I think we'll be relying on visual rather than the F5 hood for the for the water level. Yeah, which well, that could be interesting. The train sim guy says, "Good evening, chaps. Hello, the train sim guy. Welcome to the stream." King Ori says, would I consider driving on the Midhance Railway that's being spruced up? Yes, I would, when it's released. Hey, we can set Bahamas on there. But well, hey, and it would be accurate. It would, um, seeing as Bahamas has had her first visit to that railway, and is actually still alive as we speak. But well, hey. Um, but yeah, it's the furthest Southley engine has ever been. Is ever. it really? Yep. Oh, wow, that surprises me. Well, she, was mostly, um, she was mostly a Manchester engine and a um, Settle and Carlisle engine. She was very much a Northern Regions loco. I was going to say, is it because all the members that own her live in Yorkshire somewhere? Well, they're actually all uh, mostly from Manchester where. Oh, okay. Um, which you wouldn't really expect, but yeah, that's all due to Dinton. Right, I'll just stop her short and then I guess you can jump down and do some shunting. Ooh, coupling, 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 coupling. Yeah. Uh, Sam uh, is uh, now jumping down onto the up. six foot. Uh, 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 pretending to be a shunter. Shall we do it American style? Oh, with a knuckle knuckle hey. cutler. Back on, back on, back on. Health and safety, la di da. Oh, no, I'm just going to save the scenario. Keep, oh, yeah, you click. Yes, that's it. Hmm. Now, what's the safest place to stand when shunting? Yeah. Mm, that'll well, do. I, I kind of need to see the logo. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You are, right. I don't know why the wagon is moving, but that's train sim being wonderful. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> right, this is the point You're where right. train. This is the point where train sim derps. Slow down, slow down. Oh yeah, man. Spotted. We're on. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's go check we have a guard. He really should have watched us before on, but he's been lazy. He's cooking what a pot noodle that? in the in the brake van. Ah, uh, the traditional London North Western Railway pot noodle. What is yeah. this? Week? Yeah, I couldn't what? find an LNWR oh, wag brake van. I think you'd have to look at the um, you'd have to look at the LNWR air class uh, from Caledonia Works for that, I believe. Oh yeah, well I use the Victory Works um, wagons from the forty two hundred pack. They're all the, pri uh, the private owners. Well, we have a guard. They're all empty, but there's still a lot of them. I have to stick some passengers in there. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. Full national I, cobord style. I have plans for um, over the hills for that, Reese. Yeah. Right, we've got a lamp. We've got the authentic London North Western Railway confuse everyone lamps. Well, with glasses on both sides. Yep. So Matthew Palmer is doing the same run with 40 wagons. Good luck. <laughs> right, and we're back in the cab. And we're back in the cab. Let's. Uh, if anyone who's watching knows how to change the controls from W and S, you know, and so they're not backwards controls anymore, because we've done it, and I have no idea how we've done it. We just kept pressing buttons, and it just kept working. Right. Hey, oh, we got so... a green signal. Hey. Right then. I'd keep the fire between 600 and 550 as what was recommended. 
What's um, it say at the moment? Uh, 600 about. You got the blower right. on, have you? I don't know. No, apparently. Ah, I, I know what it is. Take the brakes off. It'll be the ejector. Ah. Uh, I don't know why it's taking so long to take the brakes off. I guess because we now have a full load of wagons on the back. Well, I'd probably do it. <clears throat> and we're off. And we're off. So Thank Sam you. is now going to work like hell to get a uh, <laughs> to get a good fire in inside. Got a good fire inside, Reese. I don't know what you're on about. I'm just notching her back. It's down to your driving now. Well, I'm, I've notched back already. Trying to keep the reg nice and relatively shut for the time being. Yeah. Right, here we go, chaps. One in 40 yeah. gradient coming up. Or oh, the other thing we could do, Sam, because it's a Victory yeah. Works um, brake van on the back, is we could do this. Ah, yes. Now that looks good. You know, you say that, it's all very well until it gets to the point where we have to ditch it. Also, um, are you going to shut the cylinder taps? Nope. <laughs> Oi! Stop messing with me engine! <laughs> I just wanted to get a screenshot just before we uh, inevitably crash and stall. Oh, if we do, I'll take over driving. No! <laughs> I don't I want to drive. Well, you'll have to do a good job, Len, and not screw it up. Any moment now we're going to come onto the gradient. Come on. I've been dreading this all day. I've been looking forward to it all week. Oh, I, I love the sound. This is quite an immersive loco, actually. Oh, we got quite a full boiler here. Yeah, it's because we're coming on the gradient. We need to mess around with the brakes as well. Leaving them in the graduated position, I think, actually uses steam. So let's try putting them in the running position. Give it them wellies. That's around about 600, that'll do. Well, she seems to be holding steady at 13. Yeah, you can do better. I'm pretty sure she would do better. Your water level's pretty high. Like I said, we're on yeah, a big hill. Big gradient. tricky firing on hill so you've got to try and keep the water level right near the top without priming because as soon as you go onto flat ground or over a gradient that water is just going to drop I didn't actually count how many uh, how many wagons were taken well, there's one way to find out we'll just drop them off one at a time yeah one, two, three, four. Oh, we've got none left. Oh, well, that makes it easier. She's lifting speed there. Now we're on the one in 40.
Yeah, poor Reg can play around with reverser now, I reckon. I'm just leaving it where it is for the time being, because she seems happy right now. Fair enough. We just need to keep the the, uh, the fire at the right amount. Yeah, no worries. This is the first proper heavy freight challenge that we've done. It is doing a, um, a multiplayer thing, isn't it? Oh, now we're losing speed. Come on. Oh, now she's lifting. I don't know about you, but I had a massive lag spike then. Um, it seemed alright on my end actually, but it could have just been that I wasn't paying too much attention. Also, if it were when you were going for the reverser, I were holding down shift to shut the fire road off. Oh, okay, maybe it was that. Yeah, when I press shift, it makes your camera go a bit weird. There's something going on with Streamlabs OBS because I don't have um, a chat on the, on the video. Ah, uh, right. So there's something weird happening with OBS. Because it's showing the overlays, you know, the uh, the logo, the Michael Famous donated money thing, the YouTube yep. subscriber account, but it's not showing the other thing. Yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on then. What's that boiler pressure at? Where should it be at? 163. Mm. Yeah, you are draining that pressure a bit. We're maintaining the speed a little bit. We may end up stopping at Gavilan. Nah, we're not running a stopping service. Stopping that extra time onto <clears throat> the journey. Less time in the pub. Let's say you're at £630 on the fire now, so I'd let, let the fire burn down a bit. Uh, fire's burning quite nice, Therese. You got a nice plume of white smoke there. Exactly. And she is still generating steam, but the problem is we're losing more than we're generating. So I uh, wonder about the the dampers. Maybe we can open the front damper. They are open. Are they? They should be. Remember, this an advanced loco, so I'm pretty sure the M key only covers the um, the back damper. Yeah, but there's control on them and shifting them as well. Michael Fame has just donated another two pounds. Thank you very much, Michael. It's very appreciated. And he says, Power! Riso Chacon says, Weren't Super D's used on passenger services? Um, I don't know if one of those dampers isn't open, you know. That should be open now, right? No, oh, no, that should be open. That's them. Um, that shift them. Um, so that, that should be open, right? Ah, uh, who knows? Shift them should be shut. Although we are making pressure now, the generation rate is higher. Yeah, we need to inject them. I'm blaming it on your driving. Why? Because we're going slow. I've got the... I, I'm, the reverser is only at 60%. Those injectors aren't working properly either. They're not? Nope. And I don't want to fiddle with a trimmer valve. Look, it's blowing steam through. And water. There, now it's working. No, it isn't. You sure? Nope. I think oh, it is. What are we doing? 
It looks like it's working anyway. Watch that boil of water level. Is it going up or is it going down? It's going up, I think. Got it. Yeah, I think it. I'm pretty sure it's working. You need to use the trimmer valve by the dampers. Yeah, I'm not going to touch the trimmers. Why? Because the trimmers are set for a good boiler pressure. If we start adjusting them, it's a real pain to get them right again. Just get the, the token for the next section, thank you. What's the reverse of that? 60%. That's too high, I think. Well, I'll try bringing her back, but I'll bring her back to 50. But we're just going to lose our speed. Yeah, see, we're losing our speed. Yeah, let's stick it up again then. I'll try at 55. Nah, she's still not happy, is she? Yeah, I think um, that boiler water level's looking reasonable now. Yeah. I want to try and get as much in as I can and then I can... Uh... Let the fire build up again. I mean, we still got plenty of white smoke there, so the fire's burning nicely. Yep. For everybody wondering why we're going so slow, just bear in mind we are on a very steep gradient in the South Wales Valleys and generally freight trains here were very slow. And Reese can't drive. And I can't drive apparently. That's... Hey, have we stalled? No. So, you know. One, two, one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 32, Reese, that's a bit of an odd number, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> We're picking up speed again. Do we need to get out and push? No, she's lifting the speed, look. Are we on the flat? No, I just checked. <laughs> just uh, passing through Gavilan. It's my wonderful firing, running the firing round again. Well, your fire, your pressure is coming back up, look. Just gonna do a quick bit of line siding here. Well, we're doing better than the last time I tried this. <laughs> I am kind of just waiting for the boiler to suddenly just explode. What ye of little fear? Hey, the boil the fire is burning really nice right now. Look at the the generation rate is much higher than the usage, so you could whack the injector on if you want. Yeah, all right. While we've got the while we've got a bit of pressure. See, now we're actually starting to think strategically, Sam. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what do you mean we? Well, I just said, you know. So, as the driver. I'm in charge. <laughs> great, great, I'm off to the pub. He's if off to it, pub. <laughs> I'm hopping over all wagons to the garden break, man. Alright, bye. Go have a cup of tea. I'll do I got two flagons of cider here. People think that's engine oil, it's actually cider. It's a little trade secret, like no one ever thinks to drink the engine oil. Great way of keeping your cider safe. Exactly. 
that sounds like a BLS tactic to me. <laughs> it's not loco oil, it is cider. Well, uh, funnily enough, it can be used as a, as a lubricant in the same way. By putting apple cider in the hydrostatic lubricator. Yeah, it works with sausage wine. Hell yeah. That wine just melts it. Yeah, but sausage wine can also be used as some form of paint stripper as well. Well, it is, um, it is officially registered as a biological weapon. In the United Nations uh, Convention of Weapons. Yeah, it's considered a war crime to you know, give it to anyone. But see, now we're getting into the cycle of injecting and then shoveling and then injecting and then shoveling. I. Sam's on the shovel now. So our tactic, chaps, is Sam is uh, what Sam is doing right now is for a couple of minutes he's shoveling coal, uh, which obviously as you shovel coal you're actually cooling the fire for a moment because you're putting cold coal onto a warm fire which cools it, but then as soon as you shut the fire doors it starts warming and then eventually it starts burning. So once it starts burning then your steam generation will start rising and the boiler pressure will go up and then Sam puts the injector on so that uh, increase of pressure that we're getting it goes towards putting water in the boiler so you're basically doing a a continuous cycle of shoveling and injecting especially on a very steep slope like this yeah it, um, it's also quite a realistic way of operating having two people doing it as well the fact that I'm able to just tell you about it rather than... Because I, I always... One of the things I've always struggled with when live streaming is with advanced logos driving and firing at the same time. Yeah, um, it is difficult to focus on both, but if you just focus on one thing, um, eventually you cut your workload in half. But that's the thing, is when you're actually trying to drive, fire and live stream, because live streaming... You know, trying to be entertaining and talk to the chat and all that. You've all the people watching the video now have probably noticed in the past I've struggled to keep an eye on the chat. Whereas right yeah. now I feel like I can actually have a good look at it. Because you don't have to worry about the boiler running dry or anything. Because I'm keeping an eye on that. Because I've got anyway. someone competent on the shovel. Yep. If in doubt, outsource the work, guys. That's the lesson tonight. <laughs> If in doubt, find yourself a competent fireman. Well, we're at 10.6 miles an hour, so we're, we're doing better than earlier. Yeah, we're doing all right, to be honest. The main thing is consistency. Exactly. Um, we've, we're not going a million miles an hour, but we are holding the speed and the conditions that we're at. Well, actually, is... she's lifting. Yeah, slightly. We're at 10.8, we were at 10.6, now we are nearly at 11 miles an hour, she's lifting. <laughs> Boiler water's still looking good. Aye. I think the F500's not 100% accurate, but it's not too far off. Joe Light Railway has just asked, can you do a stream of a long journey from Folkestone Harbour to Penzance? Joe Light Railway, are you aware of what routes have been made in train sim and what haven't yet? Because um, you might want to have a look at what routes are actually available. CCT oh, Mitch says... Alternatively, if you know of a load of secret routes, let us know where we can get them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it... Oh, look, speed 11.4. I'm going to notch her up a little bit. Woohoohoo, that's brave. And we've lost the speed. Put it back. <laughs> I shouldn't have touched it. I should have just left it alone. <laughs> Reese Jones says we're moving quicker than the traffic of the rock at the moment. Those roadworks. Those roadworks, seriously, they have literally been there for the last, I don't know, 15 years. These roadworks on this on the Heads of Valley Road. Honestly, when I was in school, 
I think I was in year eight, so I was probably, what, 12, 13 years old. I had an accident where I cut my finger open and I had to go to Swansea Morriston Hospital. And we drove down the head to the Valley Road. And even then, when I was 13, or 12 or 13 years old, the roadworks were still there. <laughs> the same roadworks were still there. And I'm now 31 years old. It is almost 20 years since that happened. And the roadworks are still there. <laughs> well, it's, um, there's some near me on Halifax Road. And um, basically Halifax Road's on a hill. So there's a hill on one side and a hill on the other side. Um, so it's got quite a lot of old walls that line the road. Yeah. Um, and basically for the last, uh, I don't know exactly how many, but for the last few years they've been slowly replacing it in sections. Yeah. So it's been um, pretty much almost permanently road works on that road for the last few years. What's that boiler pressure, 164? Yeah, it's just dropping now. Yeah, I'm sticking water in. I'll knock the uh, knock the injector off when we get to 160. All right. And I'll start firing properly and going off the pressure rather than the uh, just what the water level is. CCT Mitch has just asked what updates has been done to the route. Yeah, the I think one of the biggest ones was Ben changed the track. Uh, so he's using the track from um, oh, the Riviera in the 50s route, I think it is. I think it does look a lot better. Apparently, me engine, uh, not me engineer, wrong person, Matthew Palmer is doing 13 miles an hour. Well, good for you, son. It's not a race, it's, it's, uh, it's a long haul. Yeah, to be honest, it's if we were wanting to do down this to quick, 160. Sorry. Lovely jibbler. Sometimes it's nice to take a slow, leisurely drive. Well, do you know what? I'm I'm not in a rush right now because we're going up a very steep grade with a realistic load. Yeah. I mean, we'd probably have a banker on for this in real life as well. I think in real life, yes, we would have had a banker. But in train sim, they don't like double heading too well, so... No, the advanced locos don't tend to like double heading, do they? No, they tend to do weird stuff. Oh, for Stuart, he's saying the speed limit signs are all showing zero. Hmm. CCT Mitch has asked anything else that Ben has done. Well, Ben is watching the video right now, I think. Um, ben, what else has been done to the route apart from the track lofts? I have placed emergency bankers up ahead, mind, but uh, so far I don't think we need them. Well, I think we'll, we'll try and do it without them. I'm quite happy to go along at 10 mile an hour if we can make it under his own steam. Well, we haven't stalled. That's, that was the big thing for tonight's livestream, was don't stall. Yep. And to be honest, I think we're holding what we're doing pretty well, so I'm happy. As you say, it's been consistent. Which, when you're going for realism, that's kind of what you want. Um, for example, I know on the Worth Valley when the driving locos on there, I'll often set the regulator and just not touch it. Yeah. And because of the hill, they can kind of just do that. Yeah. Um, but one of the guys took a laptop down and had our engine crews trying to drive locos on it. Oh yeah. And it was really quite amusing because they struggled to get the hand of it. Yeah. Um, just because they were saying it, just everything reacts so differently to how it does in real life. Yeah, that's the big problem, isn't it? Well, the thing you've got to think about with a steam engine is that the amount of physics involved in it is just absolutely mind-boggling. You're trying to simulate something that really is a very difficult thing to simulate. Yeah, it's just, there's so much that goes on with it. 
I mean, even if you just look at the injectors, the physics required to get steam, get water into your boiler against 200 odd PSI is just incredible. But that's why they're shaped in the cone shape, isn't it? It is why they're shaped in the cone shape. It's a very clever bit of physics, but the issue is you just can't simulate that in train sim. It's just not capable of doing it. You know, it's like simulating... Essentially, you're trying to simulate the boiling of water from a fire which is constantly changing temperature. Um, you know, you can't model the quality of coal you're burning and all that sort of stuff, which does affect it. Uh, uh, Matthew Palmer is saying that the front damper is next to the cylinder cocks. Yeah, we've got the two dampers down there. I'm pretty sure that the front damper is open, isn't it? Yeah. Where is the cylinder drains? Yeah. Yeah. And because I'm messing with the cylinder taps, the uh, <laughs> we're losing a bit of speed. Yeah, be right. We'll just focus on what we're doing. We're doing all right. You can inject a little bit, I think, if you want. What's this pressure at? One six six point four and rising. Mm, boiler, uh, boiler water level saying point eight. Point six. Point six. Yeah, that like can drop down a bit more. The thing is, when you don't inject and you just leave it, you're actually making steam for me to use. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, there's, there's one of the like. emergency coal tanks. <laughs> oh, as you can tell, Sam, I had a lot of faith in our abilities tonight. <laughs> um, I still think we oh, should Oh crap, hang on, hang on. Oh, did we set the points? Just gonna run ahead. At the points. We're all right as far as the station. Let me just do the signalman thing. All right, yeah, we're virtually was... good all the way. Okay, we're good. Just passing uh, Clidic Colliery or Quarry. Sam is now injecting because we're down to uh, almost half a gauge glass on the boiler gauge on the water level. Which we is are... actually more realistic than a full glass. It is. I think you actually make the most steam between sort of half and three quarters, don't you? Yeah, that's the nice spot you want to aim for. It's also the surface spot where you're least likely to... Um, to damage your gauge, gauge glasses as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, between um, between a half and three quarters is where you're least likely to prime. Um, oh, hang on, Sam, you're not shoveling now, are you? Yeah. Uh, because we're about to go into a tunnel. But yeah, between half and three quarters is where... <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's where you... Um, it's where I won't be able to hear a word you're saying, Sam. Oh, it's no, a... never mind. And, yeah, I can hear the same as you, Reese, remember? Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. I thought we, like, I had, the, I thought I had the echo on now, but apparently yeah. I don't. Yeah. So between a half and um, three quarters, it's where you're least likely to prime, and it's where you're least likely to run dry. I can't see a thing in the cab, by the way. Yeah, me neither. And I don't open the. Um, yeah. The doors. We're not going to open the fire doors because um, I don't know if this loco actually has uh, simulated. Um, fatal blowback and um, we're not eager to find out we're gonna leave the fire door shut just in case that it does happen oh Michael Famous just donated another two pounds I saying I can officially handle the D was hey that, was that worth paying two pounds to say uh, yeah yeah I, I, fair enough I'll give him that I would like to try another load of locos on this. Like we should, perhaps we should do all the heavy freight locos in the game, and see how they handle on a fixed freight. Yeah. 
So let's say like 30 wagons, 30 private owner wagons is our sort of default testing load. And we'll see how what how different um, different freight locos handle on it. Yeah, I like this line. It's a nice line. It's got nice scenery, a nice bit of variety. And the most important thing for me, it's all uphill. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> well, the great thing is when you've got a route that's all uphill, you can work the loco. Yeah. And you can properly get it working. It's not like, um, you know, it's not like some routes where they're up and down and you've got to accelerate and then shut off and accelerate and shut off and... Just doing a bit of line siding. Lovely jabbler. I won't be doing much line siding because, uh, because it's an advanced loco we got to be quite careful with how long we spend outside of the cab. Yeah. And this is really what we could do with, is we could do with um, Parsec, if we could get Parsec to, yeah. It's what we need for train sim multiplayer, is we need essentially what we have now, but to be able to have two different cameras at the same time. Essentially, yeah. Because like, if you had, it's, it, cause this, this proves that it works. It proves that it works, yeah. It's definitely viable. You just need two different views so that like, you can uh, you can look at different stuff at the same same time. Yeah, like I could sit here looking ahead at signals, and you could sit there looking at the gauge glass and and the fire. You know, that would make it so much more realistic. It'd make it a lot easier as well. I mean, you'd be able to go off and get screenshots, and I'd be able to keep an eye on the engine. Yeah, exactly. Whereas at the moment, if you want to get screenshots, we're both in the dark. Yeah. Stuart Leming says, Leming says we need uh, the Beams 084 tanks. Because they were, they're basically just Super D tanks. Yeah. They are insanely good looking. I don't think they're good looking at all, to be honest. No? They're big. I really like them. There's just something about them. They're basically just a Super D without a tender. Yeah. It's just me. I'm over keen on the whole big chunky locos look. Mitch has come up with a list of locos that we should try. Oh? Ooh. The train sim guy says sharing keyboard controls is not the same as two separate instances of the game. No, it's not, but that's that's what the game needs. And to be honest, it doesn't even need two separate instances. It just needs one instance with shared keyboard controls and two cameras. But, yeah. Me Engineer says I'm confusing him with someone else. Okay, I thought your name was Stuart Leeming. If it's not, then I do apologise. Are you Trevor, injecting? Oh uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's a tunnel coming up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> Mark Horner says that the 2800 really suits this route. Well, I did plonk it down because I was wondering if we would actually succeed using the Super D. Um, so the plan, the backup plan was to bring the 2800 along. Can you just check the firewall door of shit? Yeah, you can. Me engineer one hundred says his name is Guion. What? We a eh? Guion. You're not Guion. Mm. Mm. It's not the Guion that we know, is it? Probably not. It must be a different Guion. Well, I'm sure there's not only one person called Guion. No, there's only one. I've only ever seen one on Facebook, and he's the only one. Riso Chackles says, how about an Eleni RG70 as a banker? Nah, no, no Eleni R here. No. LMF, yes. Great Western, yes. Eleni R, no. Mitch says, um, what about the 7200? 
Yeah, Tetla 7200 on here. I would like to see... I, I really want to try this route with some heavy, you know, heavy freight locos now. Do you know what I'd like to see? What? Taffy. Yeah. But not like the crappy Great Western taffy tank, the Oi. proper taffy tanks. Oh, you mean the taffail ones? Yeah, the pre-grouping taffail tanks, the proper taffy tanks. We're losing our speed now. Yeah, I've drained the boiler a little bit much, but... You're only down to 158, but the pressure's coming back up quite quick, so that's good. Yeah, and that boiler water level is at about 90% now. Yeah. I would good. look at it, but I can't see. we can't see anything in this cab anyway. Yeah, I'm just conscious we're not too far away from the top of the hill, and I want to make sure we don't expose the crown cheat. Yeah. And blow the fusible. It'd be a, such a shame to blow the fusible now, right at the end. Yeah. Although we're not quite there yet, but we're not that far away. Yeah. But she's done alright here. She's uh, held a nice steady pace all the way up. Do you know, I'm quite pleased with how we've performed tonight. I think me and you were actually getting to the point where we're working quite well together as an engine crew. Well, I think we're getting used to what we're doing as well. Like, when you don't need to look at the speed and the reverser and the regulator, it's actually quite easy to fire. Yeah. You're looking at, you know, you look at the pressure, the water level and the fire mass and that's it. And then I suppose when you're driving it's sort of the other way around, you don't need to look at the fire mass and the water level, just the pressure and the speed and the reverser. Yeah. I think for the next live stream we'll, um, you can drive and then I'll, I'll fire. Ooh. Are we going for the T9 flat then? I don't know. I don't know whether to go for that. Well, I mean we have to really, don't we? Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll do the T9 next week. Yeah, we can have a go with the T9 next week, and hopefully I'll be set up and ready to go for the week after. Yeah. Um, and we can see if I can actually do anything. May have to have a test run with that first before we try streaming it. Yeah. Well, I'm quite happy with this engine. Well, now that we've sort of figured her out because the first time I drove her on live stream I killed her yeah um, so I'm quite pleased that she does actually work and I think perhaps we're gonna give her a go on other routes that sounds good to me I think we should have a go on the um, Cockermouth Keswick and Penrith Railway hey that would be a good idea it's um, it's another big hilly line um, and it's a London Northwestern line as well, so. So it's entirely appropriate. Yep. I'm not sure how far from Bryn Mawr we actually are, but we've we've climbed quite a way. Yep. It's not really until you look behind you and you go, we started in the bottom of that hill and we're now halfway up the side of it that you realise how far you've come. Well, the the Blorange is pretty much there, you know, and we're virtually three quarters of the way up it, so that gives you a sense of how high we're climbing. I do love a big hill. Well, the Welsh Valleys is full of them. Yep. And Ben is going to continue this route as well, which is going to be incredible. Yeah, I've got to admit, I am quite liking it. It's a real, it's a chunk of Wales that isn't done. And it's yeah. a chunk of Wales that has been neglected for such a long time, which is really upsetting because this route, the Heads of the Valley route, is probably one of the most interesting routes in Wales, probably because of the sheer gradients of it, you know? Yeah.
Yeah, we could do uh, the Super D on Stainmore as well. Yes, yeah, Stainmore would be a good one for it. I've still not properly driven on Stainmore. Yeah, have you streamed on it yet? No, no I haven't. Ah, that's on the to-do list then. Joe Light Railway is asking are we heading to Blind Avenue soon? Um, well, we can't actually go there right now because it's not been made yet in the game. But uh, Ben is planning to add Blind Avenue into the route because it's only a few miles south of Bryn Mawr. So eventually, yes, we will go to uh, Blind Avenue. But you know it... what I'm thinking, Reese? What? I'm thinking this is going to be an absolutely perfect route for any industrials that come out for train sim. What, for testing them? Yep. The only problem with, with it is because it's such a long continuous gradient like you know like the big problem with industrials is they got the power but they can't sustain the steam steam production can they it depends on the industrial like um what's the one that's the famous one marty monster <laughs> Peck it. yeah. it's got more power than a black five but it can't sustain it for more than about 300 meters because it just drains the boiler yeah I'd like uh, to see Nunlo on this route. You read my mind. Oh, Mark <laughs> literally just put that in the chat. This would be a perfect route for Nunlo. Uh, see, I don't even need to say it anymore, do I? Just, do you know what? Industrials. Oh, yeah, Nunlo. But yeah, I reckon Nunlo would be quite well suited to this. Um, Nunlo's regular working load was about 300 tonnes on a 1 in 50. Really? Yep. I didn't think it was quite that much. Yeah, um, she's actually got just slightly, I think, is it slightly less or slightly more than a Black 5 has in terms of uh, attractive effort? She's certainly very close to a Black 5. Yeah. Oh, I think we're not far off coming off the gradient, mind. That 25 zone up ahead is it, isn't it? I think so, just after the signal box. Uh, what's this boiler pressure at? 162.4. Perfect. Let's stick those yeah. injectors. I'd say whack them on now. Joe Light Rail is asking about Blanavan. No, it's not going to be made. It's not. It's not been made in the game yet. So no, we won't be visiting Blanavan. Let's just check the signal. Yeah, we're all set to pass through Bryn Mawr. Alright, yes, I know we've just passed the... Um, we're going to go past the signal at danger. But I'm not going to... I'm not planning Caution. on stopping. Caution generally means slow down, but given the fact that um, we're going so slow anyway... <laughs> right then. So we are that walk is dropping now, and the speed's going up. Oh yeah, you're down to point six. Let's ban on your injector as well. It sounds like that one hasn't come on properly. Yeah. Probably cost me using both at once. But Well, we've not run out of boiler water, so I'm happy with that. Are we gonna stop or are we gonna do just a run through? Um, Y'all are driver, but pick quick. I mean, we're building speed now. It'd kind of be a shame to lose it, but yeah, I think we'll we'll do a parted shot passing through Bryn Mawr. So, uh, well then, guys, I better open the reg again. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been the LNWR Super D on the Heads of the Valley route. Uh, unfortunately, this is where the, the route actually stops, so we won't be able to show you any further than this. Uh, but we've made it from Abergavenny Brecon Road all the way to Bryn Mawr, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to continue uh, on to Merthyr. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It, it makes up for the last one that we did, where we started yeah. about half an hour late, so I do apologise for that again. Hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for joining us, and good night.